Flood Protection Secrets, the podcast to the protection against heavy rain and flooding by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippa. So the big challenge is how can house owners like you and me get a flood-free home? How can business managers like you and me get a flood-free company? And how can public servants provide flood-free critical infrastructure and livable cities? Flood Protection Secrets, the podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippa. This podcast is for foresighted and proactive people who do not want to shovel the muddy water out of their room while standing in the midst of the disaster. Therefore, those who design and plan, the architects and engineers need to construct such buildings and cities and that even when the entire environment is completely flooded. That is a challenge and this podcast will give the answers. Flood Protection Secrets, the podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippe. Hello and welcome again. Yeah, glad to see you again. And uh, we have something new again as well. <laughs> That is a new, new, uh, um, yeah, way how to present uh, flood protection secrets. Today we talk about this and that, and it is not that serious uh, as you are used uh, uh, to talk about this topic because it is a serious topic. It is about our safety. But uh, to be honest, uh, we are all humans, huh? and. Uh, Yeah, my, my team came up to me and uh, uh, they had already the idea to ask questions before that I have to answer. And now today they came and said, hey, uh, Doc, um, we ask you this and all that and you just answer to it. I said, okay, why not? It's also funny. Uh, I hope you like it. And thank you to my great team who always come to with other questions <laughs> and new things. Okay, great. I think uh, we just start with that. Huh? Question, um, question number num number one. Yeah, um, oceans or mountains? When I was younger, I liked uh, skiing, but I also liked water skiing. So that is more the the oceans. Um, the mountains have an advantage. Uh, whoever was at 3,000 meters and above uh, knows about the perfect view and uh, the snow and the clean air the it is everything is quiet there uh, um, there's no phone ringing all the time and uh, and then you you ski downhill um, that's that's exciting and I, I want to do that again um, however uh, I'm also a friend of uh, of the seaside and I love the sea I love it to be at the beach uh, and um, have wonder, wonderful beaches here at the Philippines, but I, I haven't seen that many so, so far. Um, at the moment, I would say uh, oceans. Okay, next question. Swimming pool or beach? I answered to it already huh? in the question before um, that I like the beach. Uh, uh, however, I'm traveling around quite often now after the pandemic and um, there are always these sw beautiful swimming pools in the hotels, but I never use. I always have my swimming trunk with me. Um, I really like swimming pools, uh, but uh, if I could choose, I tell you, I choose the beach. Um, I will never forget when I was in Rio de Janeiro at uh, in one of these, uh, these hotels in front of the Cap Copacabana. There were two five-star hotels and, and uh, the last day... Uh, I, ha I had, I think, one hour and I said, I must swim um, in, the, uh, uh, in the Pacific. Uh, is it? No, that's the Atlantic. Huh? Yeah, it's the Brazilian side. I, I must swim there. And, uh, and then I crossed uh, the small street. I, I was running over the sand and that was so hot. I was barefoot. <laughs> it was burning my feet and, and then just swimming for 10 minutes. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it a lot. So definitely, yes beach what's next um, call or text oh I'm a very old-fashioned guy I really like to call I to be honest I tell you I share a secret I hate this this chatting 
And uh, you know, to, to tell somebody that you are 50 minutes late or you cannot make it today or don't forget to bring the butter from the supermarket, okay. But what I don't like is when people start discussing fundamental things by chatting and these chats never stop. And after half an hour, you're still chatting and always bing, 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 the next, the next, the next. And, and I don't like this tapping, you know, and I see the younger people, um, they do that with a thumb and they are really, really fast. But I, I'm not that fast. Um, normally, I, I try to record messages uh, that will be audio transcripted or I do audio, audio messages that is much faster. And to be honest, um, my, on my experience, you cannot solve problems by chatting. That always requires two people and the best is they are in the same room and uh, then they discuss it because that is more than simple chatting. Okay, next question, please. Where is the question? Ah, yeah. Crabs or milkfish? Oh, I'm in the country of crabs and milkfish here uh, in the Philippines and my partner um, the beautiful Maria Fatima uh, has, uh, is doing some fish farming as well. And so I always get this, these crabs. Uh, I made a video about it as, as, as well. Um, I really like it, but it's difficult to eat. It's a lot of, of, of work to do until you get the, the, the juicy meat and it's delicious, delicious, delicious. And the milkfish, yes, with all these fish bones, at the beginning, uh, years ago, I did not know how to eat it properly because there are so many, so many uh, small and fine fish bones. But now I know very well they come in packages, three or four together. Um, and once you know um, how to eat it, very good. And I tell you, the bangos fish in the Philippines with a nice fatty belly filled with onions, garlic and fresh pepper and some fine carrots inside that is so delicious. I, I tell you, I like the crabs, but they are too difficult to eat. However, I must say yes. <laughs> um, please allow me. I must say that because yesterday Fatima made, made me um, a soup of uh, milk, uh, milkfish, uh, no, of crabs. And these big crabs. Uh, and uh, she said, I spent almost one hour to, pu to pull out all the meat from the crabs and to make a nice soup out of that. That was the best crab soup I have eaten in my whole life. On this way, Fatima, if you watch this episode, uh, that is for you. This soup was excellent. So I think I have to tell that I like crab more. Huh? But in reality, when the crab comes as a soup, it's crap. Okay, I, I go for crap. Okay, do we have one more? Uh, one more question where it is? There. Ah, which is a better customer? The already flooded one or the one of uh, getting afraid to be flooded? Very good question. Um, <laughs> definitely the one who suffered already. I mean, imagine you, you, are, a house, you are a homeowner. Uh, you, you, are, you are married, uh, you have two children, perhaps a grandmother and the grandfather are still living with you and you are sitting on your sofa and you enjoy the evening. The kids are playing in the other room. One is playing the piano and the boy, the girl, uh, perhaps five years old, is playing the piano the, with headphones. Uh, today we can do that with headphones. And the boy, eight years old, is playing the guitar in the other room. Oh, you watch television, have a nice drink, a nice bottle of wine, some something to eat, some pika pika, some snacks. Uh, and uh, grandfather is reading the daily newspaper and suddenly the flood is coming and entering uh, the door, the main door, also from the terrace because you don't know where to go first. I shall you st try to stop the water and how with some towels. The first thing you take the towels and napkins, blankets, everything what you have. But the water is still getting in. Um, and then it comes from the back door, uh, the same thing. Not to talk, and, and you watch through the window and the whole garden is already flooded. And then after a while you cannot control it anymore and the water is rising at the street side and, and then suddenly the whole door is getting, uh, is, is, is blasted, not away, uh, but the whole water is, is coming in and flooding the whole room immediately. Immediately the water is up to the knees and later up to the hips. So um, hopefully... Uh, yeah, if, if you go upstairs and you have a second floor, then of course you must go upstairs. And if that happened and later you stand in, the next day, you stay, you stay 
in the midst of your devastated living room, kitchen, and the, uh, the room for the kids. And you see the piano totally damaged and muddy. And the electronics are, are, are damaged by the water. The guitar, you don't find any more for your eight-year-old son because the guitar is already flowing outside. I think you, you saw it at the neighboring, uh, neighboring uh, lot. And uh, all the inventory, your, your sofa is only mud. It's muddy. It's, uh, it was floating and the, the damaging the television. Um, so everything you, you lost and then you're shoveling this muddy water out onto the street. And if you have done these things, I think you are aware what it does it mean to be flooded. And all those who only hear the news in the newspaper and about um, increasing uh, risk of climate change, th they never experience it. So my answer is very clear. I don't wish it to anybody. Now, if even I'm, I'm in flood control business, but of course I don't wish anybody to be flooded. I, what I want is that the people protect themselves with, with flood barriers before they get flooded. So the answer is very clear. Um, the better customer is the already flooded one because they know what it means and uh, they know how much money they paid uh, to clean up the mess, repair the, the damaged uh, things and uh, replace the totally damaged things or the things that have been uh, flown away um, by, by the water. So they, they might have spent all the hard-earned money Uh, just to cover the damages of this uh, flooding uh, issue and uh, they don't want to have it anymore again. And that is by far more than, uh, than an investment would cost. So answer, I answered the third time the same question. I realized that. Huh? Okay, the better customer is already flooded one. Okay, are we good? Are we good? No more question? No more question. Huh? <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks again to the team who prepared all these questions. I did not know about them until I see them here. So uh, this or that, this or that, I like it already. And uh, if you also liked it, give me a comment or subscribe for this channel. Um, and um, yeah, let's meet the next time. Stay safe and flat. <laughs> That is good. You can keep it inside. Don't take it out. Let's stay. <laughs> stay. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Stay safe. Stay safe and flood free. I wish and hope for you that you make the right decisions when it comes to your personal flood protection. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to this podcast channel if you haven't already. Now it only remains for me to wish you a good day. Do something with it. Maybe until the next podcast episode. I would be very happy. See you then. As always, stay safe and flood free. You are Andreas Klippe and the whole Flood Experts team. That's it again with the new episode of Flood Protection Secrets. The podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippe, German engineer, book author, and head of the Flood Experts. What can Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippa, protect for you? Anytime? Worldwide? Contact us, or just click through to www.thefloodexperts.de slash bonus. Detailed Engineering German quality. Safe. Flood protection secrets. The secrets you'll want to unfold. Don't forget, you're only one flood barrier away. Subscribe to the season and you'll never be late for an episode. <laughs>